Good evening. If everybody would, turn with me in your Bibles to Isaiah, the fifth chapter. And we're going to look at verses 26 through 30. Again, that's Isaiah, the fifth chapter, verses 26 through 30. And it reads, He will lift up a banner to the nation from afar and will whistle to them from the end of the earth. Surely they shall come with speed and swiftly. No one will be weary or stumble among them. No one will slumber or sleep, nor will the belt of their loins be loosed, nor the strap of their sandals be broken, whose arrows are sharp and all their bows bent. Their horse hooves will seem like flint and their wheels like a whirlwind. Their their roar will be like a lion. They will roar like a young lion's. Yes, they will roar and lay hold of the prey. They will carry it away swift, safely, and no one will deliver. In that day, they will roar against them like the roaring of a sea. And if one look to the land, behold, darkness and sorrow. And the light is darkened by its clouds. Let us pray. Most gracious and heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you this night. And Lord, I surrender and submit my will to yours. Lord, I ask of you, Father, to prepare their hearts. Lord, I ask of you, Father God, to set me down. And Lord, for you to speak through me. Lord, we give you all the honor and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. The title of tonight's message is Let Your Lion Roar. And what I'm talking about tonight is something that's lacking in a lot of the church today. And that's power. We have a lot of powerless churches. And that's why God brought this to my spirit. And the way he brought this is the funniest way. The insignia of this church is what? A lion. That means this church roars. Let me tell you the role of a lion. The, ro the role of a lion is that he gets a hold of his prey and he strangles it. He puts his mouth around their throat and strangles them to death. But when he comes to a large prey, he brings other lions with him to hold them down. And while the one lion puts his mouth over its mouth and its nose to suffocate, and so he can kill it while the other two hold it down. Now, if you think about it, when we go to warfare, we should never go to warfare on our own. Because when we roar, when a lion roars, if you look at it, when a lion roars, what happens? The animals raise up their heads. If they're drinking or eating, they stop. And when a lion roars, they come to an attention. The birds flee. Why? Because the king is speaking. The king himself is speaking of the jungle. When we wake up in the mornings, we need to be in a position to where the spirit realm stands at attention, including the demons, and say, they're awake. We have trouble coming our way. But too many Christians get up and the enemy just says, oh, well, they're awake. Why? Because they don't roar. We have too many full-grown lions. They meow like a cub. And what they want 
is they want the lioness. Now, now check this out. The lioness's job is to protect and nurture the cubs while they're growing up. But we have a lot of full-grown lions that still want to be babied by the lioness and not to have to put in any work. But that's not the way we're designed. We're designed as warriors. And Jesus, if we have him living on the inside of us, the word says that he is the lion of Judah. So if Jesus is the lion of Judah, that means when we wake up, we need to roar in the spirit realm. That means the enemy needs to wake up and realize we mean business. That's why there's a lack of power. And that word power in the Greek is didymus, which is where we get the word dynamite from. Now think about it. Dynamite can take a building down. We have that type of power on the inside of us if we release it, if we acknowledge it and do what we need to do to allow this power to come out. Because see, when Adam and Eve was on the earth, they had all power. They had the power to control everything. God had given them full authority over it all. So when Jesus died, he gives that back to us. But we forget that. We think we're supposed to come to church, sit here, listen to a word, and then leave. We a lot of churches believe that the only person has power is the one standing up here. But that's not true. He's just a shepherd. The shepherd guards the sheep. The sheep beget sheep. Shepherds don't beget sheep. And see, that's where our job comes in at. Because if we have that same power on the inside of us, we need to learn to roar. Listen to what it says in Luke 8 and 51. It says, when he came to the house. Now, this is talking about Jesus. It says, when he came into the house, he permitted no one to go in except Peter, James, and John, and the father, of the, father and mother of the girl. Everywhere you see Jesus... Now, mind you, Jesus had the 12 with him, but he only took three. He took Peter, James, and John. When he went to the Mount of Transfiguration, Peter, James, and John. When he went to pray, Peter, James, and John. Why? Because Jesus knew he had three lions standing behind him who had his back regardless of the situation. He knew he had three lions, and these particular three lions were the foundation of the church. Because after, in Acts, any time that anybody needed anything, who did they go to? Peter, James, and John. They went to the monarchs of the church. Jesus knew he had lions with him. That's what he was raising up. He was raising lions because if you look at it, when he sent them out, what did he do? He gave them power... Oh, to cast out devils, heal the sick, raise the dead. And that's what they did. They took back land that was already taken by the enemy. See, they went out and subdued the prey. And see, that's what we need to learn to do in this day and age, is we need to learn to subdue our prey every single day. Now let's go into point number one. Point number one is banner. What is the banner? A banner is a flag that they would fly. And what this flag is, what this banner is, it has the name of who they're going into battle against. This way the enemy can see who it is. And with the children of Israel, it may have had the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Dan. Or whoever it may have been. But they had their banner with them. Now listen to what it says in Acts. See, well, when, we go to, when we go to war, 
we need to have our banner flying. And that banner should say, sons of God. Because sons of God have power and have authority. Now listen to what it says in Acts 19, verses 13 and 16. It says, some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, sons of a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. The evil spirits answered and said, Paul I know, Jesus I know, but who are you? But see, now why would this spirit say that unless if those were lions? He's not worried about a cub because he knows that they have no authority. They have no power. That's why he could call out them. And the question is, does Satan know your name when you get up in the mornings? Does he know who you are? Because if he knows who you are, that means then you can roar like a lion and he has to move when you say move. But see, our problem is when we say move, then we doubt. Satan ain't got to do nothing then. Because as soon as he gets you to doubt, he can stand right there. And he ain't got to do a thing. Let's go into point A. Point A is imitators. Or sometimes I like to say, your typical Christian. And we have a lot of typical Christians. Your typical Christian is one who's going to come to church. They may pay their tithes. During praise and worship, they're going to sit right there. They're not going to clap. They're not going to get involved. Barely going to read their word. Their prayer life may be, Lord, I thank you for waking me up this morning. Watch over me as I go to work. And that's about all he's going to get out of them. But sons of God are going to make sure that they spend that quality time in the word and in their prayer before they do anything else because they realize where their power comes from. They draw power and their strength and their roaring from God himself. These people, your typical Christians, are lukewarm. And listen to what God says about lukewarm Christians who try to roar like lions but can't. It's out of Revelation 3, verses 15 and 16. Now, this is out of the NIV. And it says, I know your deeds, that, your deeds are that you are neither hot or cold. I wish you was either one or the other. So because... You are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold. I will spit you out of my mouth. Now, as I was doing some research on this scripture, I looked it up in a different translation. And I looked it up in the Christian Standard Bible version. And that word spit means to vomit. Now, think of this. If God has to vomit you out, he's got to consume you first. He's got to digest you and if he has to spit you out that means you're a virus because when you get sick to your stomach it's because of a virus think about it if God has to spit you out it's not because you taste bad it's because you're making the father sick because what you're trying to give him irritates his stomach That's what lukewarm Christians who do not know how to roar, they still want to roar like a meow like a cub and not a lion. Me personally, 
I want God to digest all of me. I don't want him to spit me out, period. Because honestly, I roar like a lion. I have to. And to tell this testimony, a lot of people don't know this. Every day when I get up, there are certain scriptures that I have to quote over myself. Why? Because the doctors told me that I'm in stage three kidney failure. Now, I've been through it once before. Stage three kidney failure. Now, I know what the, now, the scriptures that I quote over myself is this, Nahum 1 and 9, that no affliction shall arise upon me twice. By his stripes I am healed. Now, see, I quote these, I roar with these, because I know what my word says. I know what my word says. So every morning I get up and I roar with this with this power and authority. The last time I went to the doctor, my levels was sitting at 2.13. Normal is between 0.1 and 1.1. My numbers have went from 2.13 to 1.93. Just because, Just because I get up in the mornings and I roar and I will not allow the enemy to have territory that is mine. See, so many times we allow the enemy to come in and take what he wants because we think we have no power over him. We think that there's nothing we can do. But that's a lie and a deception from the enemy. Because all we got to do is stand up and roar and do it in faith. See, Jesus said sometimes some things only come out through fasting and prayer. Sometimes you got to mix that roar with some fasting and prayer. You got to get on your face before God and you got to say, God, now I know what your word says. Now, Lord, I'm roaring like a lion. I need you to back me up. I need you to back me up because I need you to prove that your word is not a lie, but your word is alive and breathing on the inside of me. See, this is what it's about in the church today. But there's too many churches sit there and do nothing but they believe but they do nothing at all why because they've not been taught like we have they've not been taught that we can roar that we have power they've not been taught that they can be set free and a lot of your typical christians have a to-do list what i mean by to-do list And we see this all the time. They will sit and make up a to-do list on everything they got to do for the entire week, including Sunday. Okay, Sunday, I get up, I got to go to church. After I go to church, I got to hit over to my boy's house. He's got a party coming up at 3 o'clock, so I got to make sure I'm there. You just messed up right there. Because you're not even concentrating. You're not even going to concentrate on church. Lukewarm Christians who do not know how to roar is already looking past church. They looking at what they fixing to do when they get outside these four walls. And I'm not talking about just the brothers. We got the sisters do it too. We got sisters that's going to do it too. Because they're going to sit and they're going to say, hey, I got to go get my hair done. My girl going to do my hair. Like she can't do your hair some other day of the week. Come on, I mean, let's be real with it. I mean, because if we're going, we going to hear God's word, we're going to receive something. That means everything past church needs to cease. That's not even, because see, with so many churches, okay, they're going to preach for 20 minutes, they're going to sing for five minutes, then they're out the door 25 minutes later, and they ain't received nothing. Listen to what it says in James 1 and 22. It says, Behold, it says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Sons of God who fly the banner of sons of God who roar like lions, we digest the word. When the pastor preaches, 
or the minister preaches, we go home, we crack open our Bibles, we start researching what they was preaching on, we start seeing it for ourselves. But your cubs, they're going to go right on home, they took their notes, and their notes are going to sit on a shelf. And they may forget about them until they're cleaning out the shelf one day. And that's, and that's as far as it's going to go because they're not going to crack it open. They're not going to read because of their to-do list, because they're not allowing, they're not trying to do what the Word of God says. That's why it's so crucial that we get in to the Word of God on a daily basis. It's what feeds us. It's what gives us our power. And see, and as long as the enemy can distract us from getting into that word, he knows that we will hinder our roar. It will hinder our roar in the spirit realm. But see, that's what he wants. He wants to hinder us. Why? Because with Christ living on the inside of us, the only thing he sees is Christ. And if he can hinder him in this, in this area, he's got it. He's got that area beat. But that's not it. Because we have that Christ power, that Holy Ghost power when we roar, when we stand up and say no more. But see, but before we can do that, we have to do what it says in Romans 12 and 2. And that's a very familiar scripture. It says... Do not be conformed to the pattern. Now listen, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. See, this world system says you can go to church, you can do this, you can do that. You ain't got to worry about your mind. You ain't got to worry about that. That's what the world system says. But see, God's system says, no, before you can roar, you got to get your thinking lined up with me see before we can roar like lions we have to get our thinking in complete alignment with God because when we get our thinking outside of God's will we don't roar you know a lot of people say well I can't do that it's hard for me to do that there's an old ad there's an old saying you can't stop the birds from flying over but you don't have to let them nest too many times we've allowed birds to nest on our heads in the spirit and not remove the nest. Because see, when we allow it to nest on our heads, it's controlling our thoughts. It's controlling our thought pattern. It's directing which ways our thoughts go. But when we're in alignment with God, we don't do that. It says, but be transformed. In other words, changed. Well, change means transformed. That means it'll never be the same way again. We can only do that through the Word of God, and the Word of God will transform us like it did Jesus on the day of transfiguration. Remember what, the, remember what Peter, James, and John said. Shall we build an altar? Because they saw him in his glory. They saw him in, in perfection. When we transform our thinking, our thinking becomes perfect before God. It says, by the renewing of your minds, then you, then you will be able to test and prove what is God's will in his, is good and pleasing perfect will. When we get our, our thinking lined up with God, then we can prove and test everything that comes our way. When it's not of God, we can roar and say, you need to go. You have no place here. But see, but because we don't roar, we allow everything in. We allow everything. Now listen, let's go to point two. Point two is belt. The belt of truth. Now listen to this. See, the belt holds us up, but the belt of truth is what we stand on. 
We stand on the truth of the gospel. We stand on the word of God that is truthful. That there's, because God's word says his word shall not return to him void. But it shall accomplish that which he pleases. Some translation says that I please. But the word I means him. So see, we stand on truth. And God's word is truth. It says, stand firm, then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place. See, so many times we refuse to get into his constitution. We take in everything. We take in everything people say to us because they put a little scripture on it. It's truth. One of the biggest things that Satan does that he's good at is twisting the truth. Remember what he did in the Garden of Gethsemane. He took the truth and twisted it and made it a lie. And what did they do? They received the lie believing it was the truth. But see, we have to learn to stand on what the Word says. The Bible is not to be argued over. Too many people want to argue thinking that they're right and everybody else is wrong. But as long as the word backs up what we say and what we think, who cares if we're right or wrong? We know the truth. And the truth helps us to roar because that means we're not going to accept anything that's given to us. Because when we receive something, the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to check it out for ourselves. And a lot of people will sit and say, well, this is what the pastor said. The pastor said, okay, so he can't make mistakes. He can't deceive you. We have a lot of preachers that sit and give out wrong information. And the congregation does not know because the congregation is believing that everything he says is truth. That's why there's a lot of churches that don't roar like lions because everything that they're being told is a lie. It's not truth. Listen to 2 Timothy 2 and 15. It says, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, see, before we can roar, we got to know what we're going to roar about. See, that means we have to have this on the inside of us. If we don't deposit nothing, we can't withdraw nothing. I can't go to the bank and draw out a million dollars. I don't have it in there. I can't draw out what I don't have. Too many Christians try to draw out on something that they've never deposited. Too many Christians are trying to stand on the word of God. Well, this is what the word says. How do you know? See, when you go into that, you've got to get that on the inside of you. You've got to eat it like God eats us. Like he consumes us. He loves us. He wants to digest us. We got to do the same thing with the word. We got to digest this and allow this to germinate on the inside of us. That word is going to have to die first in us. But then when it dies and it starts to grow up, when we need it, then we can call on it. Because the Bible says that the Holy Spirit will bring things back to our remembrance. It can't bring something back that's never been given in the first place. It can't bring nothing back that's never been given to it. See, the only thing the Holy Spirit can give us is what we give it. And what are we giving him? Are we giving him television? Are we giving him the phone? Are we giving him everything else? But are we giving him time in the word? So this way, when it's time for us to stand up and roar like Christians, we have something to draw off of. But your typical Christian who is lukewarm, they don't care. Why? Because they're content in the mess that they're in. They're content in their sin. Now, I'm not saying that 
when we roar, we, we do it because we're sinless. No. The difference is we deal with our mess. When God shows us something, we deal with it. We get it out of the way. We repent of it. We bring it to the altar and we leave it here. We're dealing with our mess on what God shows us. That allows us to roar like the lions that we are. But your typical Christian is going to lock it away in a closet and try to make everything look good. They're trying to make everything look good. That's why they're powerless. That's why they, not, that's why they can't roar. Now listen to what it does. Let's go to point A. Listen to what it says. Point A is sin. Listen to what it says in Psalms 119 and 33. It says, direct my footsteps according to your word. Let no sin rule over me. When sin rules over my life, it hinders my roar. My roar is not as effective as it is when I'm not confessing it, when I'm not allowing God to work with me. It's not, a, when we don't do this, when we do this, we have to, we have to be willing to look on the inside of us. We have to be willing to dig deep in our closets. We all have closets that we have locked doors in. And some of those locked doors, your typical Christian don't want to open because there's pain there. There's hurt there. There's abuse there. There's molestation there. They hide it because they don't want to deal with it because they're ashamed. But that's why they're not roaring. But in order for us to do this, listen to what it says. Now, this scripture here, we read it once a month during communion. But there's a very, God spoke a very specific thing to me. It's 1 Corinthians 11, 27 through 30. And it says, so then, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine yourself. Examine. See, if we want to roar like lions, we got to get off to our place. The Bible says, get into your secret place. Get into your closet where there's no distractions, no TV, no cell phones, no laptops, no nothing. And say, God, examine me so I can be effective in the spirit, so I can save souls, so I can be all that you need me to be. We have to learn to examine ourselves. This before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body or examining themselves of Christ and divine judgment on themselves. But now listen to this. Here's the one I really want us to concentrate on. Verse 30. It says, That, that is why many among you are weak and sick. And a number of you have fallen asleep. Now the word I underlined is weak. We have a lot of weak Christians who cannot roar because we refuse to get on our face before our God and say, show me me. See, our problem is we want to see us for who we are. We don't want to see us through God's eyes. Because see, when we see us through God's eyes, then we can look at ourselves and say, we're a mess. We are a real mess. And we don't realize it because we don't want to look at ourselves through God's eyes because God's going to see us how we truly are. God's going to see all the mess that we're, that we're hiding from him, stuff that he, we don't want to deal with, stuff that he's been trying to get us to deal with. But see, 
when we get to the point to where we do not want to examine ourselves, we get to the point of point B, and that's unbelief. Now listen to this here. The word unbelief has two definitions that I'm going to give you. I'm going to talk about them. Point B. This is out of the King James. The words in Greek, the first one is apithia, which means disobedience. And the second one is apistia, which means distrust. Unbelief comes from disobedience. How many of us has God said, I need you to do something for me? I need you to do this. And you're trying to roar like a lion, but God says, no. Until you do what I tell you to do, you're not going to roar like no lion, not in my kingdom. I'm going to keep you right here on this altar until you become obedient. See, that's the reason why a lot of people can't roar like lions. is because of disobedience. And that disobedience could be as simple as forgiving somebody. That disobedience could be walking up and God says, I need you to bless that person with $100 or $50 or $20 or whatever God has told you to do. But you refuse to do it. Until you do that, it's going to hinder your roar. And distrust? Now check this out. Our distrust, we distrust God because of what's happened to us in the natural. We have the tendencies to everybody's hurt us, so we naturally put that on our God. Man has hurt me so many times, I can't trust God. But God is not man. God says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. In other words, I'm always here for you. And his, the answer, and he says that it's either yes or amen. Amen means I agree with you. So it's the same thing. So that means we can always trust our God. And when we have unbelief, it puts a muzzle on us and keeps us from roaring in the spirit realm. You ever put a muzzle on a dog? It can't bark. It can't do nothing. And what that does is that puts us on the defense and not the offense. Look at it in a, a lot of people, we watch football during football season. The defense's job is to keep the offense from getting to here. Their job is to hold them here. The offense's job is to move through and take territory. But the church is job, but the church has went to an defensive mode instead of an offensive mode. And we need to get back to a defense to an offensive mode position because when we get to that offensive mode then God can start allowing us to roar like lions. We can start doing everything that we need to do in the spirit realm because otherwise we're useless. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to close this out. I'm going to close it out with this last one point and we're done. Point number three is praise. You might be thinking, what does praise have to do with roaring like a lion? Praise is the biggest form of your roar. Sometimes when you can't get a prayer through, when you can't get nothing through, put on some gospel music and just praise. And watch every chain that you have start to fall off, starts to break off. When you get in true praise, you start to roar at a new level. You start to roar at a whole new level.